Hello there, dear listener and watcher. This, you may have correctly assumed, is the start of the show. Welcome to the virtual launch of A Fine Collection, Volume 1. And I want to acknowledge that I'm recording this video in Vancouver, which is on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil peoples. And I'm incredibly grateful to be able to do this here. All right. And what is that? A fine collection, volume one, you may be asking yourself, having just been brought to this video on the cruel, devilish whims of the algorithm. Well, A Fine Collection, volume one, is a book. This book, which is based on a live event, but now it's in print. And to celebrate, we're having another event, which makes sense, right? Great. And this book features some of the incredibly talented folks that we've been lucky enough to have on a fine show over the years. And if you don't know what a fine show is, before it went on pandemic-related hiatus, a fine show was a Vancouver-based monthly live interdisciplinary event featuring emerging and established writers, comedians, musicians, visual artists. And some of those folks in the book you'll be hearing from tonight via previously recorded videos. And some of those folks include Dallas Hunt, Christopher Evans, Emily Davidson, Nicholas Kurgovich, Hassan Namir, Ivana Baranova, Adele Barclay, and Only a Visitor. And if you'd like to buy this book, featuring beautiful cover art by Tommy Parrish, you can find it in shops all around Vancouver, at Glass Bookshop in Edmonton, and hopefully more places soon by the time you're watching this. Or you can get it online at fineperiodpress.com, because the show that was slash still is fine is also making books now. All right. And my name is Cole Nowicki, and I'm going to be your host for this thing. And I'm going to try and keep my interjections brief, popping in quickly just to intro the performers, and you can read their full bios in the video notes. But before I go, I'm just going to read a couple quick poems first, because, well, I just like to. And I'm editing this video, so I have full control over what goes into it. Apologies in advance. That's my wine chalice. All right, let's get on with it. Enjoy the show. Okay, all right, I am back, here I am, and I'm going to read a few poems from a new manuscript chapbook thingy that I've been working on. And the first poem is called Love is Blind. I never did watch the dating show about people living in pods, flirting through walls, not once catching sight of their prospective partner until it was time to get married. So did winning mean committing your life to someone you'd never physically met? Is committing your life to someone a victory under normal circumstances? Serious question asking for me. Love is something I often think about in a panic desperate when I think I need it or have lost it like a set of keys. I'm 30 now, which isn't as old as it used to be, but Man, do I ever need to be in love before my reserves run dry and I have to frack my heart, shoot hot air into it to comfort and convince myself, forcing whatever feelings are left to erupt to the surface. All right. And the next poem that I'm going to read is about child me. And it's called Eucharitz. As a kid, I thought zealot was a type of cheese, pungent and overpowering, putting it on a perfectly fine sandwich, making it impossible to recognize all of the good things or okay things and even bad things inside of it. Religious zealot was what you put on a communion wafer, I assumed to make the body go down better. Never confirmed, I could only guess. What made it so powerful, I wondered. Why is it like that, so confident in its cheesiness that it's willing to take down everything else around it? All right. This next one is about a childhood cat. 
Miss Kitty. Every inch my stepdad got closer to death, Miss Kitty became more vigilant, laying on the bed beside him, phalanx of fur on his chest, resting on bones soft with cancer. She would hiss at the room around them, at whatever spirit fairer had approached. Offering a hand, she began to smell, not bathing, barely eating as the crowd grew, like a swell of pushy airport taxi drivers. Come with me, buddy. She yowled when he was taken, knew she couldn't keep him safe if he wasn't with her. All right. And this is the last one that I'll be reading. And it's called Thoughts After Watching the First Presidential Debate. What's the over-under on us being here in 20 years? Existential odds slim every day. Having a kid now is like betting on a prize fight. Could turn out okay, might not. Either way, someone's getting hurt. Would you put $20 on our air being breathable by the time the kid is a college sophomore? I'm 31 now, which isn't as old as it used to be, but being 50 and having to inhale toxic dust as I trudge over a sand dune in Vancouver to get Subway, killing time before I have to pick up the kid from a spring break party thrown by his friends who were also back for the week isn't ideal. Will college kids still listen to Built to Spill by then? I heard the age of irony is over, which makes sense. Can a person even be cynical when all the bad things have already happened? Don't stop happening. Because become the normal things. That's just reality, baby. Wallow in the present. Maybe there is a future out there. It's hard to tell from here. But sometimes you can smell it when it rains if you put your face to the dirt. Deeper. No, deeper. Until you reach the clay. That earthy musk? Potential. And I'll leave it there on a, on a positive note. All right, let's continue on. Up next is Dallas Hunt. Dallas is Cree and a member of Swan River First Nation and Treaty 8 Territory in Northern Alberta. He has had creative and critical work published in the Malahat Review, ARC Poetry, Canadian Literature, and the American Indian Culture and Research Journal. His first children's book, Oasis and the World Famous Bannock, was published through High Water Press in 2018 and was nominated for the Elizabeth Mrazek Cleaver Canadian Picture Book Award. Here's Dallas. Okay, Tansunita Temtek, Dallas Hunt Nesgasan, Nia Omenehio, Eglowop Susupi Utsunia. So hi everyone, my name is Dallas Hunt. Uh, I'm Cree and a member of Swan River First Nation, which is in Treaty 8 territory in Northern Alberta, Canada. Um, obviously in Canada, I was asked by Cole, um, who has had me read at, um, at fine sort of showcases, which are always amazing. And I hope after the pandemic happens that they continue on in the future, a great sort of collection of music and poetry and all sorts of and comedy and all these different things. So Cole has been very generous to me in terms of uh, inviting me uh, there to read and just generally inviting me to contribute to this collection. So I want to give a big uh, thank you, um, sort of a high high as it were to Cole. And um, yeah, I'm just going to read a poem that might end up in a collection that I have coming out in March called Creeland. Um, I don't know if it will actually be in the collection, but if not, then at least it's in this one. And uh, this is going to be uh, a, a great or a fine collection. So I'm glad that it's in there. I'm just gonna get to the poem and make this as short as humanly possible. So here we go. Um, okay, that's not working. So let me just get me out of the way and get to, get to the poem. So uh, I predictably wrote a poem about COVID-19 and being stuck indoors. So this is called Thoughts Indoors During Canada Day and COVID-19. And it's a list poem. Apologies. Number one, the dollar store down the street in Kitsilano sells uh, 
98 cents Avalon shells with maple leaves stickered all over them. Heal me. Number two, I don't want to be cremated. Just place my corpse in Fort Edmonton Park so some unsuspecting settler can find me and I can ruin their day. Number three, fireworks are explosions. They disrupt networks of kin, hurt birds, and perforate my dog's eardrums. Number four, settler colonialism. See, the crime you see now, it's hard to even take its measure. Number five, a thing I'm rationally afraid of, the raised voice of an entitled white man. Number six, generational hurts are also fire. Fireworks. They paint an endless black expanse, bleed against a backdrop before fading into it. Their graffiti pain. Number seven, occupation, a horse whisper, an accusation unevenly distributed, and yet truth nonetheless, a faculty lunch conversation best avoided. Number eight, I'll eat stovetop stuffing every day of the year until sodium fills my lungs and my heart implodes before I celebrate Thanksgiving earnestly. Number nine, a fictive coherence. See Canada, see a Globe and Mail comments section, see life is deferral as survival with an open invitation towards death. Number 10, my white, gra uh, my white grandfather lived and settled on the lands my great-grandfather gave up so his daughter wouldn't have to attend residential school. Number 11, Sir John A. Macdonald was a drunken white supremacist, something I'll scream into the soft arches of your feet as they press into my temple. Number 12, a niece of mine was born so premature that my mother described her as being so small that you could fit her in, fit her in your hand like a pound of butter. And that's the poem. So thank you for watching this. Um, and I hope you pick up the collection and I hope uh, you get to see a huge or great variety of other great poets as well. Uh, thanks again to Cole and thanks again to you for watching this. Um, hi, hi, I'm Dallas, bye. Now we have Emily Davidson. Emily is a writer from St. John, New Brunswick, living in Vancouver on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples. She holds an MFA in creative writing from the University of British Columbia and teaches introductory poetry with Simon Fraser University's Liberal Arts and 55 Plus program. Her debut collection of poetry, Lift, is available from Thistledown Press. Here's Emily. Hi everyone, my name is Emily Davidson and I'm really excited to be a part of the Fine Collection. So thank you to everyone involved and to Cole. I'm going to read two poems for you today. Uh, the first is from a book that I wrote, and I'm reading it because uh, my hometown of St. John, New Brunswick, has had their first COVID-19 cases this week. So I'm thinking of New Brunswick and uh, hoping that they stay well. And so here's a poem about St. John, which if you've not been there, is an industrial town with a lot of historic streets and charm and fog. So this is Night Walk. St. John. I wish you could see it as I see it, black against the blue-black sky. On Leinster Street, a builder pulls down evening in two-by-fours, upthrust spindles finger fourth-floor occupancy. Avoid the man with unkempt hair, he'll ask for money or your firstborn. Hold your jacket to your sides, the fundy breeze is a two-bit pickpocket. The boardwalk is a pool of light, the ocean a clot of blood. The taxis congregate like seagulls around garbage. Keep your secrets disorganized. Monitor your vitals by the Trinity clock. Wait to be automated across the street. Go home almost the way you came, but not quite. I also wanted to read for you the poem included in this collection. Uh, it's called This Is Not My Order, and uh, I'm thinking thoughts about aging, so I will share them with you to see if they resonate. This is not my order. Is it fine if I get old? It's happening either way. Against intention, the meter started running. I'm older than my parents when they had me, most movie stars, what it means to be cool. Is it fine if I'm not thin, not unlined, not full of hope anymore, like a weather vane always pointing true? I've forgotten how to listen to the wind. I'm just trying to open this jar that is my life. Then there's that story about a monkey with its hand around a peanut inside a coconut trapped by its own fist. My mistake. I wanted everything. 
Next up is Christopher Evans. Christopher is a writer, editor, and teacher from Vancouver. His work has appeared in the Literary Review, Masonouve, Event, Best Canadian Poetry, and more, and has been shortlisted for the Commonwealth Short Story Prize. His debut short story collection, Nothing Could Be Further From The Truth, arrives from Insomniac Press in spring 2021. Here's Chris. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris, and today I'm going to read uh, the piece that I have in the fine anthology. Uh, thanks so much to Cole for including me. Uh, this piece is basically a character sketch in list form, and it's called My Year in Product Recalls. Here we go. My Year in Product Recalls. Product. Hardy Boy Gaming Lounger with Mini Fridge. Category Furniture. Subcategory Chair. Hazard. Users may experience temporary numbness of the buttocks due to faulty freon compartment in the fridge component. Sharp edges of snack holder may result in severing of radial artery. Product. Optimist Body Positivity Spray. Category Personal Care. Subcategory Personal Grooming. Hazard. Product may cause minor burns and or lactation. Exposure to teeth may result in enamel degradation. Health claims cannot be substantiated. Product. Long Johnson Male Enhancement Thermal Underwear. Category Clothing, Subcategory Undergarment. Hazard. Product users may experience sudden constriction of genitals. Prolonged use may lead to testicular calcification. Product. Testoster oleo spread for men. Category Food Product, Subcategory Margarine. Hazard. Product may contain undeclared allergens and or bone fragments. Harmful if swallowed. Product. Aaron Eckhart Jaw Sculpting Kit. Category Personal Care. Subcategory Body Modification. Hazard. Use of chin alignment tool may result in dislocation of jaw. Cleft press tool may become permanently affixed to skin. Toning balm may result in hair loss. Product. Rabbit Grow Muscle Slam. Category Food Product, Subcategory Dietary Supplement. Hazard. May cause pestilential flatulence and abdominal, abdominal ballooning. Uh, gelatinization of bodily fluids may occur. Prolonged use may result in truncation of thumbs. Product. Synthetic Cat Robot Companion. Category electronic, subcategory other. Hazard. Faulty wiring and product may result in ignition if petted. Product eyes may strobe uncontrollably, resulting in increased risk of seizures. Product. Wombi in utero simulation chamber. Category holistic medicine, subcategory isolation tank. Hazard. Chamber access panel may abruptly close and become sealed. Product entry canal may become slippery and prevent egress. Heartbeat soundscape may play at unsafe volumes, increasing risk of hearing loss. Amniotic floating syrup may fluctuate in temperature. Product. The Self-Sufficient Heart. Learning to Love Loneliness by Dr. Kim Cinnamon. Feel Better Press, 2019. Category Book. Subcategory Self-Help. Hazard. Toxic adhesive and product binding may off-gas, resulting in hallucinations and involuntary perceptions if read in unventilated areas, including but not limited to sensations of wholeness, camaraderie, non-ironic exuberance, emotional buoyancy, self-confidence, fellowship with one's co-workers, tolerance of differing opinions, hopefulness, cosmic connectivity, acceptance of one's own sexual proclivities, steadfastness, heightened interest in social causes, artistic integrity, increased appreciation of one's parents, conscientiousness, gladness at others' relative success, expansive generosity, benevolence, and glee. Sharp pages may cause lacerations on hands and forearms. Thank you. Next up, we have Ivana Baranova. Ivana is a Guatemalan Slovak poet and author of Confirmation Bias, published by Metatron Press in 2019. Here's Ivana. Hey, empath, shut up. It's a perfect song. The Home Depot parking lot at sunset. My heart may lose 
but I'll never go home. I get the melting candle feeling, can't go back, not willing to be delivered from frivolous use, throat chakra violence, or worse. Shut up, stand still, or the moment will eclipse you. A schedule would make me time's own guillotine. When I'm outside your house, I feel prayer on my hands. The start of a lonely secret. What even is a promise ring? I once dated a bag of chips. Full circle to worship nothing. The power of a limited edition. Now we have songwriter and multi-instrumentalist Nicholas Kurgovich. Kurgovich has been releasing records and playing shows since 2002 and is currently working on a follow-up to 2018's Ouch. A collaborative LP, Pasadena Afternoon, by Nicholas Kurgovich and Friends, was released just a few weeks ago. Here he is with his song, My Riverboat. To make do again I've gone hit the ceiling Again. Nobody's checking it, nobody's wondering what's going on And what they do got, they got it wrong Nobody sees I'm having the time of my life There's a storm, storm's on but here, riding my way right out the song, song, song. Maybe if I exhaust this part of myself, I could do something else. I could see something else. I could be someone else, someone else. But for every could be in somewhere, my river floats on through wispy branches and reeds as a saxophone blares and a gator slaps its tail and snaps its jaws. Yeah. So shoo be do be why here comes another one again. Yeah. Made of the finest silk, it invites the light in. And it floods golden like the sun. But I am the only one that hears it, my love. Where'd you go? The adoring crowd. Where'd you go? Maybe if I exhaust this part of myself, I could do something else. I could see something else. I could be someone else, someone else. But for every could be, and somewhere my riverboat floats on through wispy branches and leaves as a saxophone blares, and a gator slaps his tail and snaps his jaws. As a saxophone blares, yeah. Next up is Hassan Namir. An Iraqi-Canadian author, Hassan graduated from Simon Fraser University with a BA in English and received the Ying Chen Creative Writing Student Award. He's the author of God in Pink, which won the Lambda Literary Award for Best Gay Fiction and was chosen as one of the top 100 books of 2015 by the Globe and Mail. War Torn, from Book Hug Press in 2019, is his latest poetry book. His children's book, The Name I Call Myself, was published by Arsenal Pulp Press in the fall of 2020. Here's Hassan. Torn in war, Hassan Namir. Tyrannical, twisted, twits, throwing, terrorist, tantrums. Shattered, sarcastic, sacrifice, sane, safety. 
raw, react, racially, regretfully, religious. Quiet, queen, questions, quiet, quick. Painful, panic, parent, past, peaceful, people. Observe, occupy, offense, once. Naked, nobody, necessary, nuclear. Machine, married, men, mechanical. Lovely, lords, lies, lucky, lonely, losses. Knowledge keeps killing kindness. James's joke, justice. Impulses ignore ironic ideas. Hider's hands, horror, hopeful. Thank you so much. And now we have Adele Barclay. Adele's essays and poems have appeared in many North American journals and anthologies, including Vallum, Cosmonauts Avenue, The Walrus, and elsewhere. Her debut poetry collection, If I Were in a Cage, I'd Reach Out for You, from Nightwood Editions in 2016, won the 2017 Dorothy Livesay Poetry Prize. Her second collection of poetry, Renaissance Normcore, was published by Nightwood Editions in October of 2019. Here's Adele. While everyone went camping, you build an altar to Jeff Buckley. We survey the coming tugboat and its undertow. I lie on the floor beside a bed that rocks you with waves of vertigo. We listen to audiobook Anthony Bourdain tear into medium rare sarcasm. He knows how to see the world and cook a bloody steak. I know my time with you is even more finite, mother of pearl sanded to silt. Everyone tells me to stop anticipating the worst, but they haven't camped on the shores of this river or seen the wolves circling our wounds, fished a drowned fox pup out of the belly of a bear they have had to call home. I'm gonna read a couple poems from this issue of ARC. Um, they published 11 of my poems uh, to cap off my, my tenure as their poet in residence, um, which was a really exciting program where I got to mentor poets month to month and read some, some incredible emerging writers, uh, many of whom are also published in this issue. Um, so I'm gonna read a couple of poems from, from what they published in the spring. David Attenborough narrates my trauma response. Just look at those slow blue waves. Shirley Temple's Survival Guide. If only power's source were a woman in the sea waving down a good ship lollipop, there'd be so much more I could do. Though I would never dare to save you or the planet like a brass trinket flung to shore. My sweetness is a south node anchored in Libra and hell-bent on preserving me through the act of people-pleasing. As a child, I'd wander up to strangers and entertain them with elaborate stories. Neighbors called me Shirley Temple. In the local man-made lake where I almost drowned, I was almost smiling when I slipped under. I didn't cry out. In case of flood, meet me in the planet's foaming grin of a man-eating sea, where the riptide's shimmy is stronger than a tap dancer's flutter kick. I don't need mercy. I just want to be held by whatever's bigger than me.
Working from home. The body sequesters itself in a shuttered room. Seedy right, provinces. The body hides in a shuttered poem. And on days when the sky is bright, the body calls you, its voice half an octave higher than usual. And on days when it's foggy, the poem folds into itself, a tray for cinnamon rolls, a cage for a rabbit, a rectangle holding a wave that continuously rollicks. The body only has time for Instagram sunsets and breakfast. The poem styles itself as a self-help memoir, except the body forgot to wake this morning. No one is listening to its advice. In a poem, the body can imagine all kinds of kin In a poem, the New York school is never as far away as New York. The body can walk through a gentrified neighborhood in any North American city and feel things it can't resolve. The poem isn't transcendent. The body merely mixed caffeine and nicotine to complete a thought. The body has quit smoking and most drugs and now plays with fear in a way the poem can't always hold, but is beholden to the body, all bodies it can and cannot hold. And our final pre-recorded performance of this video is by Only a Visitor with their song, Big and Small.
All right. That's it. That's the end of the show. Thanks again to Dallas, Chris, Emily, Nicholas, Hassan, Ivana, Adele, only visitor. You for tuning in. Everyone who's bought, carried, and shared about the book so far, and everyone who's going to do so in the future. Really appreciate it. And if you would like to buy the book, check out fineperiodpress.com to see where you can grab it near you or buy it right there from the site itself. And that's the extent of my promotional abilities. Thank you for bearing with me. All right. Take care. Be safe. Thank you.